is, you know, can you actually, would you actually argue that it's a good thing for all foreign troops to get out and then start talking with the Taliban? Well, I think, first of all, uh, that was maybe an opening position. But I think what was good, I and mean, you're referring to the comments that were made back in the fall when mm -hmm. Karzai initially opened this, uh, and they did say they wanted foreign troops out. And I mean, who doesn't? We all want foreign troops out. Uh, but what was most interesting about what they said was that they seemed to be willing to accept the Karzai government. They weren't saying, we want a Taliban government in the South. We want partition. Well, so the they uh, is always tough, because well, the Taliban has all kinds of different yeah, elements. Right. Right. There we have to no start somewhere. they, for heaven's sake. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we're talking the, groups the, here. The the negotiations have been going on. Everybody knows Absolutely. that. They're even talking to the UN. I saw their list, by the way. Now, this was the first list. I mean, it was cuckoo to the max, but it, it, it was a list at least. And we know that the lower level Taliban are fed up with the fighting. And there's an opportunity here that they, their numbers may grow. These talks are ongoing. And you're right, negotiation is very nice, but in the meantime, um, they practically blow up the Serena Hotel with a very well-planned attack. You have to address I, the security. I, I, I need to understand, because uh, two of you mentioned this in, in, in your comments, about what happens if the Taliban leave. I mean, I think Stephen is hoping that it, it does lead to, to serious talk. You're saying within 24 hours it's a bloodbath. If, I mean, the, if, this, if, 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 if the military leaves. If the foreign leaves. forces leave, sorry. I mean, it, it, well, where are we on this? Well, what happens if foreign forces well, leave? Well, and it's wrong for Stephen to suggest that everybody wants the foreign forces out because over 70% of the people in, on polls with a bigger base than we have in Canada want the international troops there. They want them to leave when we reach a stage where the Afghan national uh, security forces can take over, but they, they want us to stay, for heaven's sakes. What always amazes me is why doesn't the Taliban just stop fighting? Why, they don't they just, why don't they just disappear? All the groups from the battlefield. You know what will happen within six months within NATO? The screams and hollers from national capitals to pull our troops out because we won. And then they'll come back and do exactly what but they you did know, before. If that yeah. happens, you have to take into consideration that the warlords, the reason they don't want to disarm mm. is they want to keep their militias ready just in case this happens, just in case the international community leaves or that the Taliban, heaven forbid, should fall asleep. They want to be ready. And you'll get right back to that fratricidal bloodbath that we had between the Soviets and the well, Taliban. Let's make a quick point on that. Well, I think, I think that's true. The, concern, the number one concern of local people there uh, is security and that, that if foreign troops uh, were to just vacate without replacing something else the civil war would erupt I guess uh, what we could see is a transition to if we get a peace dialogue happening if we can bring the warring factions in then maybe there's a, the security situation will improve and then we could see perhaps a transition to UN blue helmets uh, oh in my there. God! And we can move that. Don't in. just do this I blue think helmet that we thing. We need to me, have <laughs> some other uh, force that would uh, that would be impartial that could help provide security while a comprehensive peace process was it's moving diplomats forward. diplomats like Stephen have been sending people like our soldiers into places with blue helmets on. I'm sorry, it just doesn't apply to here. Because I just want to make the point, and Sally's already made it, I want to reinforce it. Negotiations are going on as we speak, and it's not NATO that should be conducting them. It's the, the leadership of Afghanistan, and that's where it's happening, with some pretty unsavory characters in some cases, yeah, but negotiations are, of, are, are going problem, on. But, Absolutely. Um, We've only got a minute left. I, the one thing that I think most Canadians are totally puzzled on, because they can't seem to get a straight answer from anyone on it, is how long, I mean, realistically, mm -hmm. if things are going to turn around in this country, how long is this going to take? I mean, we, we keep talking about it in the parliamentary agenda. You know, we extend for a year, we extend to two years, we extend to three years. Which is ridiculous, having a conversation. I mean, what, are, are we talking about a generation? Are we talking about... But you know, how do we think we can do that? That's like playing pin the tail on the donkey with this country. How do we know when things are... We, we can decide when we're going to withdraw, when we've spent enough money and enough time. But we can't but know. But what kind of commitment it was that so to fluid. the idea of helping a country Well, Sarajevo turn took 10 years, but victory, and that was practically okay. Europe. Victory for us is when we leave, when the international force leaves. And I think you can sort of guesstimate a time. And the time is related to how much NATO now stands up to the challenge and reinforces itself on the ground and speeds up, not the killing, but the training of the Afghan National Army in particular. And I would say if it surges, it would be about five years. 
and the international community, because there would be brigades on the ground of the Afghan National Army able to take over the security. And you sure don't have to teach Afghans how to fight. You have to give them some training and collective mm -hmm. training using heavier weapons or whatever, but you don't have to teach them how to fight. We're out of time, but I'm assuming, Stephen, your argument is that it's endless if you stay. I think that if we put in a comprehensive peace process that, that tries to address the underlying root causes of the conflict, uh, we'll end this and find peace a lot faster than, than trying to just put in more troops and continue on. We need to shift direction. All right. Listen, it's uh, been wonderful to hear your, your differing appear, uh, opinions, but also where you do come together on some point. So we thank you all. Don't go away. Uh, we have some thoughts from you on the Afghanistan situation. That's next. Caroline, I'm from Montreal, and I would like for the Canadian government and the military to really justify this mission. Over the past several years since Canada has become involved in a combat role in Afghanistan, it has never really been entirely clear why we're so deeply involved in this particular country when there are so many other countries which could benefit from Canadian foreign aid. 